and they've beaten, and they're playing here at home where it seems has become a happier place here in 2009. They also put up a lot of yards last year, not last se a week, but not points against Montreal. There's a shovel pass to Cobb, DeAndre Cobb, but a penalty flag at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, the Cats played very well against the Alouettes last week, could not put points on the board, but kept the Alouettes down to 21 points and put a lot of yardage up, so we'll see what this penalty is. Looks like it's going against the Cats. Holding, Hamilton, number 52. 10-yard penalty, repeat, first down. Right guard, George Hudson. Hudson, one of the men, right at the point of attack on that shovel pass. Nonetheless, you have to like that a new creative wrinkle added. That's a, the kind of play that Cobb has excelled on, but we haven't seen that specific way of getting in the ball. Hudson's lookout, wide open, Davis dropped it. He dropped the football. Those are the plays as a quarterback you dream of your receiver coming that wide open. Chris Davis on this play was thinking about how he was going to get around the safety Baron Miles before he looked after bringing in the football. And I think that's what Corey Banks was chirping in his helmet hole, his ear hole on the way back. Now that is something we have not seen from Chris Davis, usually sure-handed. And I sincerely don't think that was a matter of a fear of getting hit. I think he was just thinking about what move am I going to make once I have this ball. Porter in trouble! Ricky Foley got to Quentin Porter just as he was about to release the football. So the Cats will have to kick. Rick, Ricky Foley coming from that left defensive end spot play into the field he's working against Dan good speed here gets a little bit of separation and as Porter moves from his throwing spot it affects all the angles for the blockers and they don't know the quarterback has moved the defensive players do he fully just readjusts his path and gets there the Lions leader in sacks by the way the man asked to fill the shoes of the departed Cam Wake 50 yarder for Nick Seta as long as this season 51 good foot the all-star of course and he has a breeze at his back it's kind of a swirling wind here tonight though no matter right down broadway and hamilton anybody who saw the edmonton game last night saw fred stamps catch a touchdown pass on a very similar play here you see Chris Davis. Everyone thinks he's blocking for the other receiver, Preche Rodriguez, behind him, running a hitch screen. Everybody jumps up. All the defenders jump up on Rodriguez, leaving Davis in the clear. Oh. But he doesn't get quite the end result that Fred Stamps had for the Esks last night. The strong foot of Nick Seta gives Hamilton a 10-8 lead, and Ryan Grice Mullen, again, no Ian Smart available to the BC Lions this week, so comes Buck Pierce, final instructions from Jacques Chapdelaine. And the Lions will try to respond. Well, Hamilton had a good drive, go bad. A penalty followed by a pressure of the quarterback. And suddenly they had to settle for a long mix set of field goal on what looked promising. That grabs a little bit of that big mode back for the Lions. Now it's up to the offense to keep it. Mallet in the backfield. He takes the ball and quickly dropped. Jamal Johnson, who gets a little more amped up when he sees that BC logo. Well, Jamal Johnson had a monster game. His first game in a Tiger Cat uniform was against his former team, the BC Lions. He certainly looks like he's raring to go here again tonight. Leads the Tiger Cats in tackles. He didn't join them until after week one. Didn't play at all week one. Throwing down for Pierce. And over the middle, and the catch made, and a first down to G. Roy Simon. But there's a penalty flag in the backfield, and might this be holding? It is. 
moot point. That's what you call blown opportunity for the BC Lions. Repeat second down. We saw Jason Jimenez and Darren Hirsping, the two BC Lions tackles last week, had a little bit of trouble. There's Jimenez. They had trouble with the speed of Calgary defensive end Odell Willis. Well, it doesn't get a whole lot easier there, as you see with the quickness of Garrett McIntyre. McIntyre tried to dip and go outside. Jimenez had to wrap him up and haul him down. Second and 19. Play action, Pierce in trouble. Let's it fly down the sideline and knocked out of bounds. Paris Jackson into it with Bo Smith. Cage to cage, grill to grill. Paris Jackson and Bo Smith are a couple of characters who will never back down. A couple of former teammates as Bo Smith is one of the many former Lions playing for this Tiger Cat team. You can attribute a lot of that to Hamilton general manager Bob Obilovich. Scouted many players, many of the current BC Lions. Scouted many of these current Tiger Cats for the Lions when he was that team's director of player personnel. Arlan Bruce will get his first touch, or maybe not. It went off the Hamilton Tiger Cat. And Jason Araki has the football and it may have hit Yannick Carter on the return. Arlan Bruce was back to receive. Well, the one thing here though is there no was a Lions. Yeah, exactly, there was a Lions player right with Carter when he touched the ball. So it's gonna be no yards against BC and it's gonna be Hamilton football. Now you see Carter right here with the ball on the ground, bounces off his leg. And before Arlen Bruce can move up to get it, Gary Butler recognizes what has happened, gets on the loose football. So the Hamilton offense indeed will come back on the field once they sort all this out. So again, a Hamilton player doesn't have to catch the ball for there to be no yards. He just has to... No yards. BC. It's a five-yard penalty. First down. The penalty is of the five-yard variety because it's a bouncing football. No yards is 15 yards if the return man catches the ball in the air and someone is encroaching on that five-yard radius. Seen a lot of that look from Wally Bono the last few weeks to start a season of... Very slow start to a team that perennially has been among the best in the CFL West since Wally took over. Well, you, you think back to the start of the season and all the talk about Wally Buono was that he needed five games to become the CFL's all-time winningest coach. Well, this is game five. We're not talking about it anymore. No. That's been long since forgotten with the way the season has started. Harlan Bruce in again. The CFL on TSN is brought to you in part by Molson Canadian. This is our beer. Along with Dwayne Ford, Catherine Dolan, Rod Black with you with the sun close to setting here. Friday night lights at Ivor Wynn Stadium. The BC Lions in the shadows of the goalposts. Trailing the Tie Cats by two. Martel Mallet up right. Runner. Hickman in on the tackle. So to middle linebacker Dennis Haley. No Otis Floyd, the former Lion, who was the hero for the Tie Cats. Of course, a week later, Otis Floyd. A big collision with Stefan LaForce of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. He's out of the lineup because.